So let's talk about drug and alcohol testing. So alcohol testing should be administered within two hours of the collision. Two hours is when they want you to do alcohol testing. Um, if you can go up to eight hours, but once eight hours has passed, you can't go past that eight hours. You have to cease all attempts for the alcohol testing part. So what they say is the alcohol test should be administered as soon as possible within two hours, but you have up to eight to do that alcohol test. They don't like it to be eight. They're going to kind of question it. If it does, you know, if you're at seven hours and 30 minutes past a crash, they're going to ask you why it took so long, but you're still within the guidelines. So you would still do alcohol testing. If it's been eight hours since the crash, you can't do the alcohol testing, but you would still do the drug testing. So the drug testing must be conducted as soon as possible, but no later than 32 hours. Once 32 hours has elapsed, you have to cease all attempts to do drug testing. Um, if testing cannot be administered within the required time limits, both drug testing and alcohol testing within those individual time limits, you have to cease all attempts. You just can't do them anymore, but you do have to do documentation. You have to fill out that documentation of why it wasn't done. Um, even if it's kind of obvious based on the police report, it doesn't matter. Um, even if the driver passed away, even if the driver was involved in a fatality, why wasn't there a drug test done? Well, it kind of, duh, why wouldn't it be done? Um, you know, he passed away. But irregardless, just get in the habit. Always do that documentation form. Could not do drug testing. Driver was pronounced DOA. Um, a moving violation must have been given with a fatality excluded to the driver in regards to the crash. So what this is saying is that in every scenario of a fatal crash, whether it was the driver who died or somebody else, it doesn't matter who the uh, fatality was, the driver has to be drug and alcohol tested post-crash every single time. But if the driver, if there was no fatality, then the driver has to receive a moving citation in order to get that drug testing. If he does not receive a moving citation, except for the fatality, if he doesn't remove a cit moving citation, you do not do a DOT drug and alcohol test, period. You don't do it. You can do a non-DOT drug test, but you cannot do a DOT drug and alcohol test unless the fatality happened if the driver did not receive a moving citation. And a lot of companies, like I said, a lot of drug and alcohol organizations, they're, they're misguiding their clients or their customers because they think it's any kind of drug test. The driver has to receive a moving citation. So your first question should always be, was it a CMV? For two, was it a DOT recordable crash? And now for three, did the driver remove, uh, receive a moving violation? If all three of those are yes, then absolutely do that DOT drug test. If the answer is no, don't do the DOT drug test. Do a non-DOT if that's your company policy. So let's just look at this kind of in more of a visual. So here's a fatality. Here's an injury immediately treated away from the scene. Here's a tow with one or more disabled um, vehicles towed due to disabling damage. If it's a fatality, always test. If it is an injury or a tow and the driver was cited, then you do the test. If the driver was not cited with a moving violation, running a stop sign, you know, reckless driving, improper lane change, something like that, that's it has to be a moving violation in order for you to do the drug test with the exception of the fatality. Okay, so 382.107, commercial motor vehicle means has a gross vehicle weight rating, gross commercial weight rating, or gross vehicle weight of 26,000 or more pounds or more, whichever is greater. So, like I said, the weight limits are different for drug and alcohol versus regular CMV. The commercial motor vehicle is only 10,000 pounds, right? So a commercial motor vehicle for FMCSA purposes, interstate travel, is 10,001 pounds or more. For drug testing purposes, the definition, and you can look at the definitions in Part 382 and the definitions and the general definitions, and they're totally different. General definitions, it says 10,000 pounds for a the definition of a CMV for the drug and alcohol testing in part 382, it says 26,000 pounds. What they're saying here is that the driver has to be operating a vehicle that requires a CDL in order to do drug and alcohol testing. For them to be in a drug and alcohol testing pool, for them to receive drug and alcohol testing on a DOT chain of custody form. 
So if you have drivers that are both, so say I see a lot of companies that have both, they have um, vehicles over 26,000 pounds, and then they have pickup trucks that may or may not sometimes pull trailers, which puts them in a commercial motor vehicle status. Um, you need to have two separate pools. Driver operating a CMV over 26,000 pounds, CDL drivers basically, they need to be in a drug and alcohol testing pool that's DOT mandated. And then your non CDL drivers need to be in a non DOT drug test. Do not put those two drivers in the same pool. Two separate drug testing pools. Keep your drivers separate. They are not allowed to be in the same pool if they're not a CDL driver. Your CDL drivers, however, can be in both pools. They can be in both. So sometimes, and I see it all the time, and actually I do recommend this most of the time, depending on the company, but most in most cases I recommend they have both and that CDL drivers are in both pools. But CDL drivers are in the DOT drug and alcohol testing pool and also sometimes the non-DOT, but non-CDL drivers are only in the non-DOT drug testing pool. Another thing I want to say, and a lot of companies make this mistake, um, and it's very rarely actually caught by investigators, interestingly enough, but we catch it because we are, we're nosy and we catch everything, um, is make sure that in your company you have a DER, which is a designated employer representative. This is the person who is allowed to uh, request and receive drug tests. This is the, the person who is the main person who orders the drug tests, who tells, you know, who, the drivers when they got pulled for a random, which schedules the test, things like that. Um, make sure that cannot be another driver. Your DER, it can be another driver as long as that supervisor or driver, it needs to be a supervisor, honestly. Um, it can't be just a, a random driver managing your, your random pool. But the DER cannot be a driver that's also driving with these other drivers. If it is, because they can't really tell you, you can't have somebody as a DER, um, if it is, they need to be in their own pool. That's my point. So if you are a DER of your company, but you are also a driver, you need to be in a separate DOT pool than the rest of your drivers. That's just the way it is. Um, and it's honestly so that if you get pulled for a random drug test, then you don't mix stuff up. So it, it keeps everything clean and legit. So. Um, if you're a DER of your company, you cannot be in the same drug and alcohol testing pool as the rest of the drivers. You have to be in an individual pool. So keep that in mind. And honestly, it's pretty simple to do. If you just call the company, um, most companies use a TPA, a third party um, agent or a consortium. If you just call that company and say, hey, I need to be at the DER. I need to be in a separate pool. So can you put me on one of your in-house pools or, you know, whatever. They'll, they'll do that for you. Um, so just FYI on that one. But the, the definition for a commercial motor vehicle for drug and alcohol testing purposes is 26,000 pounds or more. If you're designed to transport 16 or more passengers, including the driver, or if you're hazmat, um, hazmat carrier requiring placarding for your vehicles. So in that case, you would be in a drug and alcohol testing pool. Um, because if you're hauling hazmat, you can be driving a small little pickup truck and you're hauling fireworks or something and if it's placardable then it's placardable um you need to be in that dot drug testing pool same as passengers if you're operating anything with over 16 passengers including the driver so so questions asked before drug and alcohol testing like i said is it a commercial motor vehicle for drug testing purposes is it over 26,001 pounds so this is before testing um, is it a recordable crash under 390.5? Was there a fatality? No. Did our rich driver receive a moving citation? This is an easy little checklist. Yes, yes, no, no. Um, in DOT ready software, like I said, we have it all. So you answer the questions right there at the scene and it kind of tells you the answer and tells you what you need to do unless you order the drug test right from there. But um, if you want to do it on paper, more power to you. Um, there actually is some really good... Um, charts. So there's really good charts that will allow you to kind of go down the list. So kind of like that web and VR. Did the driver do this? Did the driver do that? Did he receive it? And it tells you at the very end whether he needs a DOT or non-DOT test. So 